Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back. This is part four of the Fruit Ninja tutorial series in Scratch. In this episode, we're going to be adding a bomb, we're going to be adding game over stuff, and handling the logic for spawning fruits and bombs in these kind of waves. So we have some pretty exciting stuff coming up. So let's see what we have so far. We have these fruits that spawn, we can slice them, uh, and if you miss one, then your lives will decrease, um, like that. And yeah, let's move this a bit to the upper, more right section. <clears throat> before we get started let's start by creating a new sprite and uploading our bomb costume again all files are linked in the description below you can download them and so we have this bomb that png that we can just use and we're going to set the size to something like let's say 50 and what we're going to do here is use a lot of the same code that we use for fruit because it's a pretty similar trajectory and how we want it to spawn so let's go here let's bring over Basically from here down, you can just drag it and let go. And just like that, all of the variables are copied over and we have this right here. So we can spawn one and you can see uh, it looks pretty good. So we're going to drag in a when I start as clone. And then as you can see, I can just spawn a bunch of these clones and it'll do that for us. First of all, we want to make sure that it's going to the front layer since we want to come in front of the fruits since it's probably more important. And the next thing is we want to change some of the numbers here. So let's change the gravity to be a little bit less so that it spawns uh, and it falls a little bit slower, which means that we also need to decrease this. So we'll change this from, let's say, 12 to 15. Uh, the next thing we want to do is change this from divided by 4 to divided by 2 since we want it to turn a little bit more than the other. So it just attracts a little bit more attention. So you can see this is how it's basically going to look. The next thing we want to do is... Uh, delete it when it falls through. So the way we're going to do that is use, again, a same piece of code that we did here. Let's try and find it right here. We can drag this, bring it into our bomb sprite, which we should rename, by the way. Um, and then we can remove this and just drag in a delete this clone since we're not worrying about the clone type. We can go into variables, delete that clone type variable because we don't need it for the bomb. That was only for fruits. And now when we spawn these, so let's go grab that, create clone of myself. You can see that when they pass through, they'll actually delete. Okay, awesome. So now let's handle some game over logic. So there are two times when game over should be, the message should be broadcasted. The first is here. If our lives or the lost lives equals three, so we can just use this, then we should broadcast game over. So let's create a new message, call that game over. And the second time is when your mouse pointer hits this. So we can duplicate this and say, if touching mouse pointer, then broadcast game over. And then we can create a new sprite and we'll just call this game to handle the game logic. It can be an empty costume. And then we're going to say, when I receive game over, then uh, whoops, stop all. So let's see how this looks. Awesome. Let's see if we can get game over just by losing to the fruits. So one, two, and three. Uh, and game over. Perfect. And then this is the other way. So if these get spawned, so let's create a couple clones and try to hit it. And you can see that's another way it works. So again, I'll create a clone. And if I hit it, then game over, everything stops. Obviously, we're going to have a better animation later, but that's what we're going to work with right now. Okay, so in here, in our game sprite, we want to spawn the bomb and the fruit in these kind of waves because that's how the real game works. It also makes for a more enjoyable experience when playing the game. So there's some code here. Uh, it's pretty straightforward. So we're going to do a when flag is clicked. We want this to happen forever since we want the game to go until uh, the user dies. And then we're going to say a repeat, and we'll just drag in, because I know we have to drag, so we'll drag in an if else. We have to drag in a wait, and then another wait as well. So in the individual waves, we want to maybe spawn um, our fruits or bombs, let's say five to ten times. And then we want to check whether we are going to spawn a bomb or a fruit. And the way to do that is to pick a number from one to five, and then it's just check if that's equal to one. So that'll give us a 20% probability that this if condition happens. In that case, 
we want to um, create a clone of the bomb. Otherwise, we want to create a clone of our fruit. Now, we actually can't do this because since we have this variable clone type, we have to manage that um, and we can't control that in the game sprite because clone type is only available for this sprite. So what we have to do is we can just remove this logic and we will just use a broadcast message. So we'll create a new message called spawn fruit and then we'll just do this logic and it'll do a very similar thing. It'll just do it in a when I receive. So then in here, we can say broadcast, you may guess, spawn fruit. Oh, I just realized something. In our when I receive, we want to make sure that we're talking to the spawner clone, which there's only one instance of. So all we're going to do is check if our clone type is equal to spawner. So now you can see it'll wait one second in between every spawn and one out of five should be a bomb. Okay, however, we want this number to be pretty random. So what we're gonna do is drag in a plus and a divided by and another plus like this. We want to be the smallest. We should wait is somewhere around, let's say 0.4. Basically, we want to wait less as we proceed in the game. So the way to do that is to have a three and then we're gonna divide this by score plus one. So this individual operator will get lower as our score gets higher, which means that we'll wait less time. So that's perfect. We want to add this block to wait a certain amount of time in between the waves. So we're going to pick a random number from two to four. And just like that, our waves have been created. Let's check it out. So we can slice the fruits. This is the first wave. You can see it spawns pretty slowly. But as I progress, they spawn a little bit faster. So this is the time in between the waves. And then you get to wave two. And you can see I accidentally hit a bomb there. But yeah, this will manage waves and it does it in a pretty good way. So if you want to test it out, you'll see that the game gets progressively harder as you make it farther and, and don't die. Okay, that's where I'm going to leave off this episode. I hope you guys enjoyed. I will see you guys in part five where we build out more of this game. And yeah, make sure to subscribe and like the video to stay updated on future parts. Peace.